Hello, hello, Crystal here. Welcome to another episode with the Interactive Immersive HQ. And in this video, we'll continue our series of creating artwork that is influenced by other artists. And I am covering Edardo Landi, who is an Italian artist who started as an architect and creates artwork that plays with viewers' perceptions with uh, optical illusions. So... I really enjoyed a lot of these different shapes and one that really caught my eyes was this one and I thought it would be very interesting if we can make it generative and interactive with your mouse. And if you have a sensor, you can also swap the mouse by using your hand motions with like a leap motion or a connect sensor. So I'll show you what I got. It's a pretty simple network here. You can see that I have these shapes and the rotation is, is um, controlled with the mouse's UV coordinate and have a little bit of feedback on it. So I'm excited to share this with you and let's begin. As always, we'll start with a clean network and I'm going to start with making a container comp pretty important so I have this container comp and I'll just call this visual just, just so we know what we're doing we're making a visual here <laughs> and I'll start from making the shape that we're going to have um, multiply our instance onto onto a bigger piece so we'll start with making a circle top and in the circle top I will have this polygon on, I have the size to be four, I want the radius to be bigger, so yeah, probably like 200 by 200 seems pretty good to me. And the radius, I'll have it to be 0.5, So I want it to be just half of this to be black. So we're gonna actually make tr black triangles and comp it together. So what we'll do is have this rotation to be 45. And the center Y to be 0.5 happens. Great, so we have um, half part of a, part of a uh, triangle. And I'm gonna add a transform top after this. In this transform, I will make this to be rotation 90. Now I'll just add these together. So I add an add top. I know it's as simple as piping one and piping the other. Let's have this background to be black. So I will add a transform and I will make this alpha one and comp over background color on. So now I have this shape. Great. And I add a null after this. I'll call this right here. And now let's create the tops that we'll instance onto later on. So I add a grip saw, grid saw. And this grid, I like to make a viewer active and press the W key so I can see what's going on here. And over here, I want the rows to configure 2020, perfect. And, but the size, I want it bigger. So the size, I will actually have it to be 38 by 38, pretty big. Great, and then I will also add a rectangle stop. And this rectangle stop, I will change the size to be Bigger two by two and add a geometry comp after this. So if we ever have a geometry comp, what we also will need is a camera and a render top so we can render this. I will change this render a top resolution to be 1280 by 1280 because I want a square size of okay. And let's make a material. Let's have a constant material. And I want this to be the constant material shape. And I will drag this onto the geometry 
Great, so we see one of these right now. Um, I'm gonna add a null after this. I'll call this out. And I'll have this for the, I'm gonna have this for the background for now, just so I know what's happening. But, so I want a bunch of these eventually, and also I want it to be interactive. So let's create that system. I'm gonna turn this off. I will make another circle top. Circle top. Wonderful. And this circle top will be our instancing for the rotation. So how are we gonna do this? We want this really small. So we want the radius to be 0.2 to 0.2. You can play around with the size a little bit later on. And I want this, so um, essentially follow my mouse and also be on the same size of what we're gonna instance on, so this grid. So the resolution of the circle, I want it to be the same as rows and columns of this grid. I'm gonna just copy this parameter and make this as, let's have it find it. You can also reference and also for the columns, same thing. And now you'll have this to be 20 size, 20 by 20, same as the rows and columns. But you can also just put 20 by 20, but maybe you wanna play around later on to change this to 10 by 10, and we don't have to worry about having to change the, the resolution into spots. You can just have it binded and connected it together. Great. So after this, I'm gonna add a transform. And I will just add a null for now and call this um, root, root inst for um, the rotation. It's, it's the same. So how are we gonna make this move with our mouse? We're gonna add a panel chop. And the panel chop, I want this, what it selects, to be this comp container. So I can just directly drag that on top of here, or you can on the component, just do dot dot, which will reference to go up to the container. So now if I'm gonna make this viewer active and you don't see anything because it's not directing, it doesn't, it's not looking at anything, but I'm gonna change this layout to be, a thousand, or I'll do 1280 by 1280 because that's the same size of the render. Ah, but I'll make this smaller for now. And I'm gonna close this up and have this window on the side. And now if I put my mouse over, I see some of these channels start moving. Even if you click it, there's like one for clicking. So you see this click one. But what I want is the roll U, U and roll V. So you see over here, it's low and high gets higher in the V too. I'm gonna add a select. And for our channel names, I'm gonna do roll U, roll V. And now I see the role U row V and I just rename it to U and V just so to make things a little bit more simple. Great. And I'm gonna add a math after this. And good practice, I'll add it all after. So I want this to be the transform X, Y for this. So let's see what is the lowest. If you do negative 0.5, you can see that it gets to the edge, but I don't want it to be half. So if I do negative 0.35, negative 0.3, gets to a good number. So same with positive 0.3. So for this math, I want the range to change to negative 0.3 and positive 0.3. I'll have this referenced to this transform. 
I will just directly drag this transform here and there. So let's see if we move this on this panel, it should move this circle. Great. Wonderful. Let's make this a little bit jazzier. Uh, we'll want make, actually I want this a little bit smaller. Let's have this circle to be point zero two. That's a bit too small. Let's see point one. I'll add a feedback and then I personally was a little bit lazy sometimes. I'll just use this image filter. There is a feedback tool right here and I'll drag that after the transform and have the opacity DP 0.95 and I'll add a blur to this on the side up here add a blur up after the transform have the filter size to be a bit lower at four and I will put eight over have this feedback on top and just blur on the bottom so we'll see this nice kind of like a little trail you can see this little ghosting happening over here and it should help if you have the feedback to be or have this circle be sixty bit flow and then that ghosting trail. So now we have this. Let's uh, change this to be a chop. So top is chop. Here I only want one channel, so I can delete all this RG, uh, GBA and just have a R. I'll have the the output as um output as a single channel set on and also crop um, crop to be full image great let's see what we have here Ooh, wonderful wonderful and let's make this export method dat table by name perfect and i'll make add a math and this math I have from 0 to 1 to be negative 180 to 180 because that is, I wanted to rotate that amount because if it's just 0 to 1, the rotation, you don't really see much happening. I'm going to add another null and then I'll call this rote inst chop. Sure, why not? <laughs> and great. And now we're going to start instancing this geometry. I'm going to turn instancing on the trans translate one. I want it to be the grid because I want this shape to be 20 by 20. So I'll just directly drag this translate op over here and have this be P0, P1, and P2. Let's look. It is. Big. Oh, this is size. We have to make this further back. Let's have this to be eight. It gets more. Thirty. Ooh. What if this viewer we have it? Put on. Ooh. Back to perspective. Let's go. How back do we go? Let's go 50. Okay, cool. I'm happy with that. <laughs> Let's have the rotation to be this rote inch chop. And I just want to rotate the Y. So that will be R. Now, if you see, as I rotate this, this rotates too. Okay. Let's make this a little bit jazzier. 
Let's have a background color. I'm going to put this in the background. And I'm going to also have this visual to look at um, at the this top. So for the background top I put out. So now I can see as I move, this also moves it. A little bit, not as fast. Let's have this to be five. Nice. And I can play around with some of this. Uh, I want this a bit smaller, 0 0.05, 0 0.05. Maybe even smaller. Let's, let's go back to 0.1 and see what that does. Too small, too, too small. Plus point three zero three. Ah, that's a good. That's a good sweet spot. Yeah. And what if we have this little bit? This math to actually be negative point three five. So we get to the edge a little bit more. Since we made the size smaller, we can get, yeah, great. And you can do little things to make it a little bit cleaner if you wanted to. Like if you maybe on the edge, you don't want to see, if you want to crop it in, you can also add a, add a, another circle. These are all just extra flares have a 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and polygon on, size 4, resolution same, 1280 by 1280, and put it inside. Inside of here, drop it in, and make it bigger. Then you don't see the edge of the, of the rotation. You can add a different background color. So how to transform. What if this was white? So this right now it's black. What if we have it to be white? How does that look? Kind of like black better. Things you can play around with. But that's pretty much it. This is our little fun, attractive piece that I can have. You can play around with the different grid size too to see what different looks that you can make. So what if this was 10 by 10? I'll just get less or 25 by 25. And have this to be smaller, size one to one, or have it to actually be a, a rectangle rather than a perfect square. That gives a little bit of a different look, or even if it's a little bit overlapping. And as always, if you create something that you made out of this tutorial and you enjoy and want to share, feel free to tag the Interactive person HQ and myself and my personal handle. I'll leave it in the comments below. And I hope you enjoy it and see you next time. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.